Hey everybody, I'm going to try to really quickly go through the basic ideas about how you can use OneNote to make videos for your classes for online sharing. Now, this is good if you want to work through worksheets. This would be good for accounting professors. It's good for economics professors. Or if you need to show mathematical steps, do drawings, just like you would do on a whiteboard or a chalkboard uh, for a class. So what you're going to need is a computer with a touch screen. So let me move this over here a little bit. Um, and some kind of stylus. So the best kind of experience you're going to have uh, if you have a computer with a touch screen and a stylus is if you have a computer and a stylus where they both know how to work together. And this is called a digitizing stylus. Digitizing stylus. Some laptops have this feature where they come with a stylus. So, for example, this is a Lenovo Yoga 14. This computer is about three or four years old. And this digitizing stylus that comes with it, one of the things I like, is that it actually stores the stylus and charges the stylus in the base of the laptop. So you're less likely to lose it that way. Here I have a very, very old Dell that has a similar kind of thing. It has a touch screen. It also has a stylus. I don't think Dell makes any of these uh, now that have the stylus that stores in them like this, but this is the same kind of idea. Most manufacturers of laptops that have a stylus, whether it's the Microsoft Surface, the Lenovo Yoga series, most of them aren't going to store in the laptop itself, but what you want to make sure that it is pin capable or it has an, what they call an active digitizer in the screen. The reason why that's useful is when you write on a screen with a digitizing stylus, and I'll show you this in just a minute here, uh, you get really, really smooth lines, really, really accurate drawing. Now, what if you have a laptop that has a touch screen, but it doesn't have that capability and you don't have a fancy $100 pen to go with it? Well, you know, whenever you go to conferences sometimes, they'll have these pens that have a little rubber nub on the end like this. This one is I got from A&T Online. So maybe contact the A&T Online people and see if they have any of these laying around. So it's a pen on one end and it's this little rubber nub on the end. You can use these. They're not quite as accurate for using with handwriting as one of these digitizing stylus, but whenever you go to conferences or you can, you can go buy these online or at Office Depot for just a couple of bucks usually. Um, so here's one example. This is another example that I ordered online many years ago. It has a pin that pops out through the little nub, but you just you know, retract the pin and then you can use that for writing on your screen here. So these, these are options for you. Now we also have in our classrooms these big monitors that have a little stylus hanging off of the side and those work really, really well. I think that those are digitizing styluses. I think they have a battery inside that allows it to communicate with the computer so you get those precise lines. Moving on to the next thing, you're going to need some kind of microphone. Now, I have a really fancy microphone set up here. You don't need anything that fancy. Again, you can go to Walmart or Office Depot and you can just get a little microphone that sits on the desk uh, for not very much money at all. You can also get an inexpensive wireless headset. This one's called a Logitech H760. This is a little old. I'm not sure if they sell this model anymore, but you just wear it like this. You flip the microphone forward whenever you want to use it. And when you want to turn the microphone off, it goes like that. Um, there are also, it's just like anything. You can spend as much as you want on a headset. You can spend as much as you want on a microphone. A lot of people have the Blue Yetis that cost hundreds. Of course, you can also use your microphone that's built into your laptop. So you don't really need to buy a microphone. Just make sure that whatever setup you're using has one of dollars if you want to spend that much but you don't have to spend that much just practice recording at different distances and at different volume levels with your microphone to get something that is a acceptable quality 
You also need a desktop capture software program. Could be Camtasia, could be Snagit, could be Mediasite. See my video, I'll link below to my Snagit video. Again, Snagit is free for all who need it from now till June 30th, 2020. Um, and once you watch that video and you have an idea how to activate Snagit and it captures whatever's on your desktop, then open OneNote. And what I'm going to focus on here is how to use OneNote and a few little tricks and things that I like to do with it. So let me switch to my laptop with my stylus and show you how that can work. Okay, I have activated my desktop capture software and I'm in OneNote. Now, once you open OneNote, let me show you what you're probably going to see. Let me go to just a new section that I've created here. Now, I've been using OneNote for a decade now. So I have hundreds and hundreds of pages. On the left-hand side here, you see that I have these different notebooks here for different classes that I'm taking and different classes that I'm teaching and uh, quick reference guides and other things like that. And one for my music. Um, if you want to create a new workbook to organize videos or, or handouts for a certain class, then go down here to the bottom where it says add section. And then you want to give that section a new name, like you know, my 101 class, for example and just hit enter and then for each different lecture or each different activity or video you want to add a page and it starts you with one blank page here called untitled page and you can give it a title so you can say chapter four lecture one for example now if all you want to do is do math or draw like you were on a whiteboard then click this little button over here that looks like some books sitting beside each other and that will minimize that list of all those different tabs and different books and different pages for you and now you just have this blank workspace and using your stylus you can click a different colored pen up here and you can write whatever you want now if you find that you want it to be thicker then you can hover over and click that pin and see this little tiny drop down arrow click that and you can change colors you can make it fatter if you want so you can write some text and so this is much much fatter this might be a little too fat for what I'm doing also if you go to click view you can add rule lines to help you write and then you can line up your writing on the lines so that it's a little neater. Now, the most common thing that I do with my OneNote is I will create handouts for my classes. So let me bring up a handout here and show you how you can bring it into OneNote so that you can use it for a class. So here's a Word document that I've created that I use as a handout for my students whenever we're covering elasticity. And whenever I create handouts for my class, I have a lot of the information they need, but I also leave a lot of blanks that as we go through the class, they are going to need to fill in so that it's more interactive. So have blanks here, here. We have a graph that we do right over here on the right. And so the way I like to get this into OneNote, you can just directly print this to OneNote from Word if you like. Sometimes if you do that though, what I've found is OneNote will want to make this document still editable and where you can select the text and things like that after it's brought into OneNote. But I don't want that. I want this just to be a picture that I'm drawing on just like it's a piece of paper I don't want there to be any interactivity whatsoever so what I do is in Word I'll save it as a PDF so click here and you can save it as type PDF and then when I open 
that PDF. Let's give it a second here. All right, so here's Acrobat uh, opening it up. Now, if you don't have Acrobat installed, it might not automatically open it up like this, but you want to open it up with whatever PDF reader software that you have, and then print. And if you have OneNote installed on your computer, and it is a, I think, default part of Microsoft Office, then you select Send to OneNote. Now, some of you might have two versions of OneNote installed, OneNote 2016 and OneNote just without any additional descriptors there. OneNote 2016 is an older version that for a while they discontinued. The Just Send to OneNote is a more modern version that they're still updating now. They said they're going to start updating the 2016 version. The plain OneNote is more like an app version. What Microsoft is trying to do is make a more unified application that looks and feels the same whether or not you're on a tablet or a phone or whatever kind of device you're on. And I would recommend for now just use the OneNote and not the OneNote 2016 version. So send to OneNote and then we just print it just like we would print anything else. And then after you hit print, OneNote is flashing right down here. And it asks you, where do you want to save this printout of your document? And it says, right now, I'm in Chapter 4, Lecture 1. That's my current page. Or, so do you want to put it on that page in particular? Or do you want to put it on a new page in the folder called My 101 Class? I'm going to do a new page under my 101 class. So just select that, hit OK. And now if we open up this little tab with the books laying on it, now we have two pages. One of them is what we were looking at before, the Chapter 4, Lecture 1. This one's just called Printout. It's good practice just to always go ahead and give that, you know, here's Chapter 6 handout, just so it's easier for you to find what you're looking at. By default, OneNote is going to put the date and the time here. If you want to get rid of those, click them, hit the delete key on your keyboard, delete. And also, normally by default, what OneNote's going to do is you see that this is a page that I can select and I can drag around. To make it a little easier for you to work with it, what I recommend is going to each page clicking on it with the left mouse button, right clicking with your mouse, and then going down to set picture as background. What that will do is make it to where you can't drag it, you can't select it and click that page, so it's not going to move anywhere. It's embedded in the background. Since this is a multi-page handout here, you need to do that with each page. So the first page I already did, second page I did, third page, right click, Set picture as background. So now all those pages are embedded to where they aren't going to be changed. It's just like it's a piece of paper. Then we can minimize this little menu on the left. And then what I personally like to do is there's a little arrow on the right that says enter full screen mode. Click that and that will make the menu bar up top a little smaller. And then here you can just start drawing. So if we want to interpret this minus 2 elasticity for electricity demand, then how to interpret that is put minus, whoop, that's a little too fat, right? So let's go up here, drop down, let's make it a little skinnier. So minus 2% divided by 1%. That means for each 1% we raise the price of electricity, people will use 2% less. What if we change the bottom to 10%? We need the top and the bottom to have that ratio of minus 2. So minus 20% over 10%. If we raise the price by 10%, then the quantity of electricity people use will go down 20%. And we can draw graphs down here. So 
if we had a particular equation, we could just kind of plot some points like this. And then we could freehand connect them with a straight line if we wanted to, like this. We could do it in a different color. Or if we wanted to draw a more perfect straight line, we can go up here to Shapes, Lines. And the trick here to draw a very straight line in one note is to hold down the Alt key, then click, and drag your line down. And then you get a nice line exactly where you want it. Now, sometimes, as you just saw, one note is finicky, and if you click in different places, it might drag the window to the left. Let me show you, go ahead and show you why that happened and how to prevent it. When we printed these pages, you see this gray box up at the top? That is an area where it wants us to be able to type. So it's like set up a Word document page, and you see this blinking cursor. It wants us to type over there. If we're not going to be doing any typing like that, click this gray box up at the top and delete it. You can only do that after we have set these pages into the background. Otherwise, it would delete them. But after you set those pages in the background, then that will help control some of that jerking. If I click, it's not going to now want to go to the left where it's treating this more like it's a typed document. This is a writing document at this point. Now, after you do this, you can print these out. Uh, and you can go up here to, here, let's get our menu back. We can click the three dots, and we can go to print. And it gives us a little preview about what this is going to look like. See, this first page is blank. This just has the title. If we click the right arrow, we can see what the next page looks like. And we can see our drawing on it there. And the next page. And the next page. And so you can print these to a PDF, or you can print these on the printer as handouts for your student. So when you're done with using OneNote in these ways, then you just stop recording your video on your video capture software, save that file, and upload it to YouTube as I show in my other video about Snagit. So there are uh, lots and lots of other things you can do with OneNote. I don't want to overwhelm you. This is kind of the basic idea about how you can use OneNote along with video capture to make some good lectures if you want. This doesn't require buying any new software, except you can use the free Snagit, as I, as I mentioned in the other video doesn't require uh, buying a document camera. The only thing you'll need is to make sure you have a microphone. But most laptops will have a microphone already, so that's an option for you. So please let me know if you have any questions. Um, the best way to do this is just to try it and see if it works. Play around with it a little bit. Make a test video for four minutes and see if you can get all the little moving parts to line up together. I'll talk to you later, and I wish you the best of luck with your classes, guys. Bye-bye.